Well, we are here in Jerusalem and it's the 25th of July, 2008. And this is Leah Stolov and Yehuda Stolov. And they have agreed to have a discussion about some of the most important uh, beliefs in their life. And I'll start off this discussion by asking them um, a, a simple question. Can you remember uh, your parents and their beliefs and when you were a young person how did their beliefs affect what you came to believe? Talk a little bit about your early years and and your formation of your beliefs about the purpose of life and the best way to live. Either one of you. This is a discussion, by the way, you're not talking with me, you're talking with each other. So look at each other and we'll be able to edit this little comment that I'm just making right now out of the tape, but be sure to talk with each other. And, and, uh, <laughs> If you're, by the way, we can adjust the chairs right now if you're a little too close, if you're comfortable, if you like it, it looks great, but. Okay. And by the way, this take 10 minutes, whatever you want to do. This, this is an open-ended, it'll get in discussion and then things will really start rolling. I want this to be something literally that your children could look at years from now and go, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents really said something about their past. It was very interesting. Okay, go ahead. Oh, it's a tough question. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Okay, I think for my father, uh, I got, uh, I was very much indoctrinized to be honest, uh, truthful, and uh, not uh, to cheat and to, and to follow uh, some sense of a uh, moral rules that he had. Uh, I think my mother was a little bit like him but less uh, less direct like him. Yeah. It's very hard to think about what she... Uh, on one hand, I think she saw that uh, education was a real, very, very, very important thing. And uh, also she, she saw that to be a... Uh, Someone who help people is very, very important. I think these are the main things that I got from my parents. <laughs> uh, it's called in Hebrew, I think, for my mother, uh, for, my, for my father to be a mensch. In Yiddish. In Yiddish, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, to be someone you can count on him, uh, reliable, a uh, sense of integrity and dignity, that's it. And you, Yuda. Okay. So, um, with me first from the religious perspective, um, especially for my mother, I got a strong sense of connection to the Jewish tradition. We were not religious, but we were very traditional and very much connected to it. And, and I mean, my father died when I was 10, so I don't really remember a lot. I remember here and there going with him to the synagogue, doing this or that with him. I don't remember any special messages or speeches that he gave. Um, 
there were other uh, other values um, like uh, uh, to be independent to not to not to take anything from anyone uh, to keep close relations with the family um, to respect the parents uh, also to be uh, to be honest to be uh, um, yeah, I think these are the main things. And then, then uh, when I was uh, six years old, uh, I remember that they consulted with me about probably a conversation that they had before, whether uh, to send me to a religious school. And the argument was that uh, you get better education in religious schools, religious children learn, learn better to respect their parents and so on. And, uh, and they said, okay, we keep kosher anyway. Uh, uh, it's, it's enough and maybe we can do something more. And then they thought, what can we do more to be more religious? They said, okay, we don't have a car, so maybe we can decide not to travel on Shabbat. I'm not sure we really followed that, but there were not so many opportunities because we didn't have a car and there's no, there are no buses on Shabbat. And I think for them to take a taxi wasn't something that they did. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so this was the decision. And, they, and they, they, I think it was nice. They asked me and, uh, okay, I, I expressed my six years old opinion, but uh, it was part of the, of the conversation. And then I started to study in, in a religious school, uh, which didn't matter very much for six, seven years. But then I became religious. When it comes to uh, your religious formation, or lack thereof, Leah, tell us about that. Uh, you mention uh, his mother's strong uh, connection to religion. My mother also had a strong relationship with tradition. She liked what uh, doesn't really uh, takes too much work from her. Like uh, to go to the synagogue on the holidays and uh, and have uh, all kinds of things connected to tradition. Like Shabbat candles. Like uh, light Shabbat candles and they make kiddush every Friday. But uh, I think my father followed it because he had to, not because he really, really <laughs> wanted he and uh, besides it I had grand grand grandmother who lived with us she was uh, the grandmother of my mother and she was the religious person of the house and because of her we had to follow more rules and uh, more uh, religious rules uh, we liked it very much I was used to it I never uh, complained uh, how do you say Basal Vechala? Diary and meat? Dietary laws. Dietary laws. We had to separate uh, milk from meat. It was fine for me. Uh, I think religion came more, came more with my grandmother through the meals and the food. <laughs> this was, uh, it was like a package deal, a grandmother, grand-grandmother who cooks very well, feeds you, and she's also religious, so it was a good way to transmit the Good the food. Religion. Good food comes with religion. Uh, enjoy yeah. the religion and enjoy good food. Yes, good tradition. But you didn't join the religion. Right. Be I think she was the one who, you know, we could do everything we wanted and she was the, re uh, the one who is in charge of the religious uh, part in the family. Because of her we had to go to the synagogue, because of her we had to have, uh, you know, Yom Kippur uh, habits with the fish, the kaparot. Mm -hmm. It was because of her when she died we never continued.
what um, what aspect of your religious differences in your family cause you the most difficulty? And what aspect actually do you find interesting and charming and maybe even good for your family? The fact that, well, I'll just leave that. I'm not going to leave In my way. family. No, between you two. Ah, between me and you, though. I think they are about the same that I was raised. What I was uh, used for, like what my grandma, grand grandmother did, I'm used to it. And when you did does it, it's fine. The the new rules of things that I never uh, really knew. You know, like I remember the first Shabbat that uh, after we date the first time and I didn't know that Shabbat ends and starts. And I waited for your call <laughs> and then my friend told me, but Shabbat is not over yet. She was once religious and then this is why she knew. So uh, rules like that, I, uh, I didn't know they were strange for me. And uh, I think some of them make me angry or uh, how do you say, rebellious, uh, it come out. And the other rules that I was used, like Shabbat and kosher, it was much easier for me because I was used to it and it was nice. What now is charming for me, mainly it's Shabbat. I cannot think about anything else on daily life. I think Shabbat it's uh, charming, I don't know, it, the word charming is a little bit strange, but... Uh, yeah, I think Shabbat has a special charm. Yes, yeah. Shabbat uh, I think is, uh, as the years come and I work too, and I work much and hard and I wait for Shabbat, I know it will be a rest, but we don't have to ask ourselves where are we going today. Where are we driving today? Uh, besides that, maybe, maybe, maybe some of the holidays, like when you build sukkah with the children, Pesach, no. <laughs> uh, Too much work. <laughs> Too much work, but when it's done, it's nice. Yeah. But again, it's like a repetition of what I knew before. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. That's I mean, it but you, you don't do so much more than that. Uh -huh. I mean, what do you have to like? <laughs> no. But I mean, you uh, keep, you keep the, the kosher, the separation of... Uh, yes, I have to keep the, kosher and I have to be there. very precise with Shabbat. I right. wouldn't care if Shabbat enter one hour more or less. It's, it's not the really matters for me. But you, I, I, the I, idea I, is good. Yeah. And I, th I think, the, in, in my eyes, uh, not only that the idea is good, but you can achieve the idea, the good idea, only if you are very strict in, in yes, observing everything. Yes, you told everything. me that, really. Yeah. You don't yeah, but I, I really think so. I mean, if you, if you, are, if you allow yourself to, to just make one phone call, so then there's maybe only check email for five minutes and then yes, it, and do, then it, it, it do deteriorates the and then right, you don't rest right. at all, you, know, right. you don't get a break. I agree. I agree. It's like, uh, like you take the question. Okay. No, no, it's just a continuation. It's like one of, of your friends who is secular said that they, she wants to observe Shabbat from <laughs> secular uh, considerations. Yeah, no. Uh, yes, uh, I want you both to give a feeling of any conflicts you have felt you would, uh, with, with, uh, in your family because of your slight difference or, or it's strong, not differences. Slight, strong differences. It's not slight, strong differences. Strong differences. Sing mainly on... And also things that you might have appreciated in these differences, you would have. Both mm -hmm. conflicts and appreciation. Education of the children. What is that? I think if it was only you and me, okay, yeah, we, we could manage. manage. But right. when it comes to the children, it's much harder. 
Also, I mean, you are, uh, it's not so much a matter of being secular or religious here, more you are a kind of person that is not strict by your nature, so you don't <laughs> like anything to, to do 100%. So if I insist that, you know, Shabbat starts when it starts and ends when it ends, and I don't of, like words, of right. milk and meat is not only general, but, <laughs> you know, all the way. So that, that's also a problem between us. <laughs> Uh, anything else between us, not uh, about the children? No, I mean, it's not, I, mean, I think for two adults to, to live together, if one is religious and one is non-religious, it's not so complicated. And, uh, but we yeah, actually discussed it. To live with, uh, with a religious woman, it's a different experience than to live with me. If, I mean, without the children? Without the children. Leave the yes. children. Yes, she, yes. She's much more devoted and she's uh, into it. It's not a, yes, uh, but, but a it, small thing. Right, yeah. It, it would have been better if you were religious, right? So this Easier. is a question, I see. It's not so much a question. Not either. easier. Maybe more... Uh, more. Yeah, more harmonious. In a sense, on, right. almost on more levels, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. It's easier. It's not. Uh, it's less uh, challenging. I mean, it is a challenge. Generally, I mean, yeah. it depends on the person. But of course, it depends on the person. I mean, if you, yeah. if you, if there's a person that you get along with, and is not religious, uh, it will be better to. G to live with them, with him, then with the, with the person that uh, you don't get along with personally, and you have the same worldview. Yes. I mean, the worldview is less important than the personal interaction, which is actually <laughs> similar to what what I do. I mean, in my in my, in my work, I also say that okay. I mean, world. I mean, building a relationship is more important than sharing a worldview. Mm. I'm trying to think what the difference makes us, uh, how they influence us, the difference. I don't think they are. I mean, I think we... There are no difference? No, the differences don't, don't influence us, I think. I think we, we ignore them when we can and we have some frictions when we cannot, and we solve them one way or another, and, and then we ignore them again. <laughs> this is what I think, I mean... <laughs> no, okay. Can be. How about the children? Go back in your uh, history and try to think about the first time you had a discussion on how the children were going to be raised, I remember the scene, I have it in my eyes, when it was in my flat in Tel Aviv, you remember? We sat on the balcony and we tried to think if the child will approach a pen in Shabbat, would you say something or not? You remember? No. No. I, I just remember that uh, like any... We talked about yeah, it. Yeah, I remember talking about it, I don't remember what we said. But like, uh, like most other things about children, the, the difference between the theory and the practice is very big. Yes. <laughs> but and the theory itself changes what, once you have real children. In other cases, you know, on other aspects as well. Yes, and then the three children are also different right. one from the other. Right. The older is not so religious. The middle one is have religious uh, periods. Mm. When he is very religious, right? Mm -hmm. And the small one is a happy one. Small one. <laughs> it's a small one. Uh, I think we, we came into raising children without really thinking hard how it will be. Right. And, and I think basically they grow, they get a religious education. 
because I mean, you may, you? and you you don't like it, but I, when I say it, but I think that uh, being secular is mainly lacking the religious thing. I mean, if I t um, teach them that they have to pray, you have nothing in no in your ideology that say that you no, know, you are not allowed to pray. It's not. It's not like no, a. Fun, but it's. Uh Right, but they don't see me praying, yeah. and I don't like if you push them to do things, if they have to obey. Yeah, but you push them to do other things, and they have to obey, and they're not convinced. Uh, you that to wash and to wash yourself before you go to sleep and to pray, it's not the same. <laughs> right, it's not the same. <laughs> but, the same. Uh, but, I mean, to... Uh, to teach them to get the habits, it's the same. Right. I think I give you, uh, I don't know how to, to say it, a permission, because I think that you're the father, and you are a father, and they have to, uh, to have some identification with you. I cannot say all the time, no, 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 this is father, but you don't do with what your father is doing. Like if you, if you would uh, play uh, football every, <laughs> every Saturday and I wouldn't like it, maybe I also have to say, okay, but you know, this is the father, this is what he likes to do and uh, not to be in between. This is more what I'm following you, the much less uh, the idea of them praying all day. Yeah, they don't pray all day. Mm. You didn't notice. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I also don't pray all day. Yeah, but uh, okay. Uh, no one prays all day. Yes. Uh, what um, what do you think about this question? Uh, most people hold a religion because most people hold a religion uh, because they believe in some sense it will bring about ultimate happiness in the next life um, and if they don't hold to that religion correctly there will be consequences some kind of judgment or if you're an Eastern religion the karma you know the uh, the uh, the fact that you didn't do things the way you should here will come back and hurt you later do you have very different attitudes about the afterlife and judgment and have you ever talked about that between each other? Whether We talked about it, uh, I think, uh, three times. Oh, did we? With your mother, maybe. And she remember. likes to ask you if you believe in the next world. I don't remember. And will you get some, uh, go to the uh, so Garden of Eden or... Mm -hmm. So what do you think about the next life? I don't think about next life. But now Randy asks you, so what do you think? I cannot really get connected no. to next life. I don't do things, I think I want to be a better person and to do things good to other people and to be like, uh, maybe I was raised, but not for the future, uh, for the new future, for here, for... How you know, like they teach our son to uh, guard the, you know, how do you say, the earth. The earth. This is something that I can be connected to. That I can see the next generation, how we leave the earth for them. But I cannot think about myself, what will be good for me if I do this or this. I'll go where I'll go on heaven. No, but what, what? I don't care. Mm. You don't care if you go. I, don't, I, I, mean, I care more how I leave this world to my children, much, much more than what will happen to me. No, that I agree. I mean, I, th and I, I think, think that I think if we follow it, maybe it will. I think people need to do uh, 
what they need to do because, because of this life, not so much uh, because of the next life. It's not, I mean, if, if I do something uh, because I believe, on, only because I believe I will get some reward in the next life, then it means that I do not think that this thing is really valuable. It's just uh, some kind of a game that I get mm -hmm. uh, scores if I do this and not that. Uh, but if I if I really believe that uh, the and, and this is our belief, I believe that the commandments uh, and the Torah are um, the, the Torah is the blueprint, the blueprint of the world, and uh, God created the world in a way that it will be compatible with the Torah. And the Torah, and the other side of the same coin is that the Torah is the right guidance of how to live properly your life in this world. They have value in this. It has value in this. But this you think sometimes value in this about world. yourself what will be. No, what not so much. I'm a, I'm a young person. I'm so far away from but death. But you think sometimes. No. And when you'll no, be but older, I mean, it's, you think no, you me, will think about for, it. No, but for me, it's a feel. I mean, philosophically, I do think. I do. I'm interested in that. I sometimes think about that. I read books that uh, about describe. Next Yes, the next. describe the next life, but it's it's not it's not something existential for me. I'm not I don't see myself die and uh, go to to heaven or I don't know. And you don't really do purposely things for that. No, no, I do things because they are valuable in this world. Okay. And because and, and because I'm commanded. I mean, it's something. Uh, the belief in God is uh, maybe more in English should be more trust in God that if it tells you, you know, you should avoid from eating meat and mm -hmm. milk together mm -hmm. that means that this is something that is bad for you even though, even if you don't know it But you don't think that if you uh, do it, you'll go to Garden of... Uh... No, 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 not, uh, not every day I mean, yeah, from time to time, yeah, I understand that there is I mean, of course there is a connection between the way you live your life in this world and your position in the next but world. So you have some thoughts more uh, specific? What do you mean more specific? If I'm like this with my children or like this in here or no, there? No, 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 I'm, I'm like this. I try to be like this with, with my children in the way that will be good here. But you know, it's something that Anyway, I don't know if we, maybe we'll edit it out, but uh, just something that I read that, uh, that it just illustrates that. I mean, there's this short prayer that you say every morning mm -hmm. when when you get up. You don't, I say, mm -hmm. uh, which I say I think it's a it's a beautiful prayer, and I, I love saying it. And I say it because uh, uh, sometimes I am hardly awake, but if if I'm aware enough, I'm giving thanks to God for. Uh, that you walk up. That bring me, me back to life mm -hmm. again and giving me a good night's sleep. But uh, I just got an email a few days ago that uh, there was an, a convention of neurologists and someone gave a, a lecture about uh, uh, the phenomena of people getting up in the morning and fainting. And she said that uh, uh, the research shows that it takes the it, I mean, the body is, is flat at night, and when it gets up, it needs 12 seconds for the blood mm -hmm. to flow to the head. And if you get up too early, too quickly, uh, too, qu yes. uh, too quickly, then uh, you you faint. you faint. So it is recommended when you get up, mm -hmm. when you move, or that you st uh, stay either uh, lying down or sitting for 12 minutes, 12 seconds before mm -hmm. you get up. Mm -hmm. So a, a neurologist who is a, an orthodox Jew got up and said, you know, there is a, this prayer that we say in the morning and this prayer is exactly 12 words mm -hmm. and it takes 12 seconds to say it. So, so I, I don't think that, you know, they composed the prayer because of this uh, phenomena, but I, I, I say that uh, I believe uh, that that the religion offers things that are good, and I don't know always, and usually I, I know very little about 
the, the multiple aspects mm -hmm. of, of where it is good. And this is a, an example of something that I always thought it's a good thing. I never thought it has some neurological uh, implications. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the, the uh, philosopher uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau mm -hmm. said that uh, no one can live in peace next to somebody who will go to hell. <laughs> uh, you seem to be able to live in peace without worrying about that subject. Uh, that's what I, that, I think that's a very interesting exchange you just had. Um, but I'm going to push at least Yehuda on this. Do you worry about your wife's soul? Mm. No. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Don't worry. No, I mean, I mean, we, we had this conversation. Uh, I mean, I had this conversation with Randy. I think it's. In Orthodox Judaism, I think there's less, at least in most most circles, there's less urgency to to change the other than, for example, in uh, fundamentalist Christianity. And because I mean, the, and 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 this, and it is. Um, it is not. I mean, it's it's a result of a of a deteriorated situation because one of the commandments is that uh, if if I see someone do something wrong, I should uh, approach him and explain to him uh, that he's doing something wrong and why what he should do and all of that. But uh, already in the Talmud, uh, the Talmud says that uh, it is not just a matter of saying. I mean, the, the commandment is not to say, it's not to that the voice will go out of your mouth. It's mainly that the voice will go into the ears of the other. So you have to know how to do it properly. It's if, true in everything. Yes. <laughs> if you just say and the other doesn't listen, not. then it, it, it is not considered as you said. And, and, and already the Talmud said, uh, someone said, uh, I wonder if there's anything, anyone in this generation that knows how to do it properly. And the general ruling today when these questions are asked is that if in the Talmud there was a question, if there was even one person who knew how to do it, probably in our generation, which is much uh, less spiritual and much more deteriorated, then uh, it's quite sure that there's no one who can do it. So it's like one, it's one of these commandments that we are unable to fulfill. Like there is a commandment to, uh, many commandments that has to do with the temple, that okay, we cannot do it. Or but maybe also that it's not, uh, why don't you worry about my soul? Not just because you cannot. No, it's, uh, I, and this, I mean, this is one aspect. Another aspect is the aspect of what the prophets say, that uh, a person cannot judge. I mean, I, cannot, I, I, I don't know your spiritual position. I don't know what the situation of your soul. I, I can say definitely, and I'm 100% sure, that it's better to observe Shabbat than not observe Shabbat. I have no doubts about that. But to say that any person who observes Shabbat is necessarily better than any person who does not observe Shabbat, there are millions of other aspects of the personality that and most of them I don't know. Even if I see someone drives on Shabbat, what do I know about this person? Nothing, hardly anything. And already the Jeremiah said that uh, that uh, a person just only see uh, through. Now I'm not sure the the right translation. If he sees the eyes of the other, or he sees through his own eyes. But anyway, he sees uh, only the outside, and only God can see the heart. So I don't, I don't really know. Uh, so you don't uh, patronize. Yeah, I, I, and, and also I think okay. this commandment, uh, one one of of the one of the key issues in having 
in being able to say something that the other way will hear is of course not being patronizing. But you, the maybe also our family is an opportunity to see. I don't know what is to worry about my soul because I, I could worry about your soul also. <laughs> It, it, I think it, uh, it enlarges your, uh, your uh, world. Yeah, in a way, yes. I, th I mean, I think mm -hmm. that, uh, that I, I mean, I really think, and it, it's already, you know, Rabbi Cook says about repentance. He said that the, the tragedy we live in is that no one repents. The religious people think, no, we are religious, we are fine. It's the secular who need to repent. And the, the secular say, we are secular, we're not interested in this religious stuff. The reli repentance is for religious people. So no one, no one is interested in repentance, in tshuva. And, and the, the reality is that, uh, that everyone needs to repent. I mean, uh, repentance is, a, is an, an ongoing process of self-improvement and everyone needs to do it. It doesn't matter if he's the chief rabbi or or, uh, I don't know, the, or, or a thief. Everyone needs to, to, to be aware of his position in the world, of where he needs to go to, and, and how he can make the, ma the next step to become a better person. Mm -hmm. Also, there's another, another um, concept that maybe I should bring in, and it's the concept of, of um, how do you say, a baby who was captured. This is the the technical halachic mm -hmm. term mm -hmm. that uh, if someone uh, did not get a religious education, you cannot blame this someone for not being religious, right? So if someone did not, I mean, he, he, his uh, parents didn't teach him, for example, to separate meat and, and milk and eat them together, you cannot, uh, I mean, you cannot complain to him that. Uh, that he doesn't know it. He, he needs to, to study it first before and, and within the, the whole context and because, because it's not only one part, it's part of a whole world view that he didn't get. So he don't know that there is a God, he doesn't know that uh, the Torah was given to the nation of Israel, he doesn't know, know that it's uh, abiding. Uh, and this uh, concept is also used for um, uh, in, 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 in the, uh, maybe it's not important. I mean, it's 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 used in different halachic uh, uh, discussions about, uh, for example, uh, maybe I'll give, do, we'll go, give one example. There's a um, uh, one of the of the rules is that if someone who violates Shabbat in public touches the wine, the wine is forbidden to be drink to uh, to drink. Uh, and, and then they, they say, what about non-religious people in our days? And they, it's already the Chazonish that said, uh, no, they are like a, 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 someone who was captured as a baby and grew up in, uh, by, by non-Jewish non people and he grew up in non-Jewish context, he don't know anything. Uh, and then you cannot uh, really say that he's uh, really, I don't know, uh, challenging the community by violating Shabbat in public because he is not challenging anyone, doesn't know anything. Similarly, the, the secular people of today who did not uh, get you know, the... Don't say that these things on day to day, I really... I don't see you judge everything religiously as I think other can be religious people. What do you like, mean? I don't know. I, I don't think that every day you, you think this is religious or not religious or... No, or, I don't. I mean, uh, about people, if they are religious or not. Yes. No, I don't think about that. At all. Uh, At all. When you meet my friends, you talk to friends, you talk to secular yeah, yeah. people. I, as I observe you from no, the outside, you never it's really... Not an issue. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't... I, you I never think. really think about it or compare, yes. like I think in, in, when I come to your uh, sister house, it's a very strong viewpoint. Everything is judged from this uh, filter. No, for me it's not. I, I don't even you see it with her and she doesn't have to say anything, you, you feel it. 
You feel how she categorizes the world, how she thinks about things. I give her an, as an example. Mm -hmm. She's not the only one, okay, of course. Yeah. And I think that uh, this is an important thing, is that the daily life, uh, yeah, but I don't I, know why I it's, don't how is it connected to the question, but <laughs> I don't remember. But I don't also differentiate between uh, Jews and Muslims and Christians and Jews and whoever. Besides, so uh, you are uh, a no, step but ahead. But no, it's not. It's not. Uh, but when I come to send my children to school. I would send them to a Jewish religious school. I, I'm not, I'm, I would not send them to a Muslim madrasa or to a non-religious uh, Jewish school. Besides, but it's not. So, uh, so I mean, it's it's not a it's not a matter of uh, of my being. It's a matter of uh, of the fact that I really think that uh, these things are ir irrelevant for my. It, they are irrelevant. Yes, I mean if. Um, uh, if my son had a, had a girlfriend, I, I, I will be interested about uh, her religious background. But uh, but to be friends with people of uh, of different from what? Uh, how? What do you mean? You will be interested in in a religious? If he asks me. Uh, <laughs> if he asks you, okay. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that the, that uh, my observation. Mm -hmm of what you just discussed uh, is it something re remarkable about your marriage you want your husband in his deep belief to say I am concerned about your soul because I love you so much on, you know so why aren't you concerned about my soul on the other hand he doesn't care about souls of uh, on the other hand you don't want him to be particularly concerned about the next life but more about what's going on here and now and so you have a way of understanding his view that the next life is more important to him than it is to you and so you'd like him in that context to want to worry about your soul on the other hand you admire him deeply for the fact that he doesn't judge anybody right. you don't see him worried about anybody's soul in terms of the right. next life right. he tends to accept people right where they mm -hmm. are and so he didn't get that quite you know, <laughs> right. that you were really giving him an enormous compliment about this subject right. of, of a human being not acting as but God I, I, and you were saying right, apparently that some human beings I don't like. do that but you know, this is I told you once when I met you. This is was the fir the, the first thing and most important that he's not uh, judgmental. He accepts people as they are, not only from the religious point of view. And you were saying in some. I'm much more judgmental. Maybe if I was religious, <laughs> I would <laughs> judgment people much more. <laughs> He's not, he used to laugh at me that when I got the whole idea of uh, being religious, I used to say, this is not so religious. And he's, yeah, he's too much religious and yet less religious. And he was laughing at me <laughs> what I'm doing now. But it's very surprising that I'm. Uh, more judgmental than him. Would you say in general in, uh, in Israeli society that secular people are very judgmental about religious people and others? Is yes, there something? Uh, they are judgmental I think. Most of them don't know much so I think it's more of the not growing together, not learning in the same schools. It's like two societies growing parallel. You know like in America, maybe it's like black and white people wouldn't go to the same school, so they would be looking at each other with uh, some uh, resent or uh, prejudice. So I think this is the main thing that it's out. And yes, yeah, secular people, I think one of the mechanisms they have, they feel superior to religious people and religious people feel superior to, re to secular. Like religious thing that they didn't see the light yet. And the secular thing that they have uh, with their uh, uh, positivistic, 
positivist position or uh, of science and education, and, you know, and they they are better than uh, religious people are more primitive because they uh, hold. Uh, they hold the uh, ideas that are primitive. This is a thing general. It's yeah, not yeah, uh, yeah. something about Judaism only. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's, yeah, it's I think a it Western, comes from, like European, comes from uh, Europe, yes. right? It's European not, uh, people, originally Israeli. Yes. But the, I, I think it's. I mean, okay. These are the specific manifestations. I think of, of something much more general that uh, people tend many times to reinforce the own, the own identity through yes. diminishing Negating other identities. The other, right? So uh, Arabs are like this, and religious but people are like this. You do, but it's most of it because we don't know the other yeah, people. Of course, of course, That's of it. And when you know people, uh, you. For me, when I met you, I didn't feel less superior or inferior. I was, I was curious, I think. Curiosity. Yeah. And that, I, I think this is the, the main force that uh, invites people to join encounters, mm -hmm. the curiosity. Because, oh, yeah, they feel usually superior, sometimes inferior, and they have all this negative views about the other, but I think some, some place deep, deep inside they know that the, all these prejudices are baseless because they never met the other, they don't know anything really about the other. So there's also curiosity to many times to meet and see what, is, what these stupid people are really are. Mm -hmm. And then of course the, most of these prejudices uh, disappear immediately because they are... Yes. We have to finish. So yes, we've got to finish. This will be our last question, but that was the whole um, the whole dialogue for me was worth that last exchange. It was very good. But a lot of people will be able to see. You say, you know, the problem is superiority. The, uh, the the religious people think they're superior, and the seculars think they're superior. I thought I think that was a very good exchange. I'd like you to end your dialogue. Uh, looking at each other again, and Yehuda, does, oh, does, does, has, has, your, has Leah ever in your family treated your friends, your, your look at each other, uh, look, uh, uh, your religious friends as if she was superior to them? Did no. You, so when she said she's judgmental, what would you say to, to that? <laughs> No, I mean, she's judgmental in the sense that uh, people she likes, she likes, and people she doesn't like, she does, she don't, she don't like. So, so I, she was nice to, <laughs> to my to friends of mine that she liked, and uh, <laughs> right. she, she wasn't nice to friends that she didn't like. And it had not, nothing to do with the level but of. But to your family, I was nice. Right, right, right. You did your duty as a right in law. Um, uh, no, and and but this has had nothing to do with uh, with the level of religiousness because I have both religious and non-religious and ultra-orthodox. Oh, but your family is religious. Yeah, no, but I have different types of friends, and oh. and you did not discriminate on the basis of the level of re right. religiosity right. or whatever right. or religiousness. Yes. In that, then you're both alike. Interesting. Yes, I think we have some sort of signature in common. <laughs> Is there anything in, in uh, a one-minute question you've ever wanted to ask each other uh, and have it recorded um, as in the movies? <laughs> Do you have a question on this, on this general topic we're having that you'd like to address together? No. No. Well, I wanted to then thank you for uh, sharing a little bit of your life uh, with uh, people. This will be on the internet and, uh, and other places. You'll get a chance to edit it. But uh, there's a guy by the name of Dr. John Gottman who observes married couples. And he has a talent of observing them when they're having an argument 
and he can predict whether they're going to divorce or not by their, their facial expressions. Um, not what they say, but how they look in their yes, faces. Sir. You can give him a... And he... he, he the movie. <laughs> and, he will and, tell and, us and, the future. Well, no, I've seen his work, uh, and I, can, I, I use his work, and I can just tell you, you guys know how to argue the right way. Yes. <laughs> Very respectfully, with humor. You can see that there's something extremely deep between you that is not going to be broken by an argument. In the second world, you do. Well, maybe, maybe, <laughs> you find another woman. I, I think maybe we should buy one of these and one of these. And whenever <laughs> we want to, to argue, we should light <laughs> big lights.